This is a House of Logic video on the subject of Proxmox clusters. Uh, and on this one, we're going to be looking at uh, NFS shares. So on a previous video, I didn't think it was possible that you could actually set up uh, an NFS share for your ISOs, uh, or in fact, for your other storage, um, but for primarily for your ISOs so that you could actually share them um, between your uh, cluster nodes. So this is our... Um, our cluster, which is based on an old laptop and is uh, based on ne uh, nested virtualization. Uh, what you need to do to add NFS, go to your data center, go to storage, and in here you can then go to add, and you have lots and lots of different options. We're going with NFS. Now the ID is simply what we're going to call it, so we'll call it shared NFS, which is hardly imaginative, but is what it claims to be. We're going to pop in the IP address here of the server that is going to be providing the NFS. And this is a, a NAS unit on my home network. Uh, and we're then going to choose export. And that's the actual share that we have. So there's a video one, which we don't want to use, and a shared NFS one, which we'll pick there. Uh, and this is the option when I um, set this up the last time that I missed. So the content up to this point um, was basically for disk images only, so for actual um, hard virtual hard drives um, within the cluster. If you choose ISO image as well, then you can set it up um, such that it will allow you to include all the different um, diff types. So in fact, we'll, we'll chuck on everything apart from, I'm not particularly interested in exploring backups in Proxmox. Um, so we'll, we'll leave those and we'll go with uh, everything apart from the backup option. Uh, now we're going to have a quick look at advanced. So pre-allocation is default, NTFS version, well, um, we'll use the default on that one as well. I think it's NTFS 3 on the server side, but we'll, we'll just go with the default. So if we now add, then that's given us our shared NFS. Now there is actually already a um, an ISO on here, so I'm, I've had a look, or I, I certainly tried to add one. Uh, it doesn't seem to have picked it up, but we'll just go and find something, and we'll go with that G-parted live. It doesn't really matter what this is, as long as it's a, a valid ISO that can be mounted on the hosts. So it's nice and small. We won't have to wait too long for this upload to complete. Okay, that's finished. Uh, important thing to note here, of course, is when we've added the uh, shared NFS um, uh, volume or path, whichever you want to call it, uh, it's actually showing up here as a um, piece of storage underneath each host. So we can then do stuff with that, and it should be showing up. So if it shows up there as ISO images, and it will also show up on the other host. Um, it doesn't actually matter there too much. We're going to go in, and we're going to now choose to mount this up. So part of this is to do with the migration behavior. So in a previous video, um, we've migrated uh, both these machines across from the PVE1 um, uh, guest slash host on our, um, on our uh, nested virtualization environment. Um, this time, we're going to set this up to use, hopefully, if this comes up correctly, the gparted live image. So this will mount it up. We're not particularly interested in having a look at that directly on the host, but instead on the migration behavior. So now it's got this, and it's on shared NFS. If we try to migrate it, it doesn't now have a problem with us migrating it because it's already got access to it on the other node. So if we needed to have any storage that's mounted between the two, we can do that. So off we go. It is allowing us to migrate that machine back from PVE2 back to PVE1 because the storage, the shared NFS, where it's attached ISO is shared between the two. And that also gives you an option in terms of where you'd want to keep any ISOs for this um, for this kind of nested environment, or in fact, uh, an actual production environment, because it can often be just easiest to have a, a simple ISO share that you share between your um, individual um, hypervisor hosts um, to well, basically deduplicate the requirement for, uh, for having ISOs on every single one. So um, there we go. That gives us the ISOs um, in a bit of shared storage and allows our virtual machines to be bounced between our host nodes and uh, and continue to operate uh, from them. Uh, so that's about it for this video. Um, thanks for watching and uh, please like and subscribe if you're into that kind of thing. Um, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks very much. Bye now.